Hey Grace family, welcome to our kitchen. Like you, we're getting ready to be able to celebrate communion together uh, this coming Sunday. Last week you might have heard Pastor Tim mention that starting this week and going forward for the rest of the time that we're sequestered, we're going to be celebrating Bread and Cup together as part of our worship service every week. I'm really excited about this because it's a way for us to be connected as one body in Christ, even as we're all sheltering in our own homes. Well, one of the things I want to give you some help with this week is how to think about preparing your table to take bread and cup in your home. What might you purchase at the store or what might you get to be able to do this well in your own home? Now, first thing I want to mention, if you need help getting uh, elements, if you don't want to go to the store, it's not safe for you to go to the store, please email me personally, bob at gracesillbeach.org, or call the church office, and we'd be happy to have some volunteers bring you some, uh, some implements so that you don't put yourself at risk by going to the store. Now, uh, what should you use for the bread and cup? Well, first thing I encourage you to think about is what's the most loving option? What's the most loving option uh, for you, for your neighbor, uh, for the community around you? If you have to choose something that's maybe less than ideal, maybe not what you would choose in a vacuum, but it's what you have on hand, that saves you from putting yourself at risk or putting someone else at risk by you going to the grocery store, I'd encourage you to use that. But if you have more than one option in your cabinet already, or you have to go to the grocery store anyway, what might you choose? Well, let's start with the bread. There's a lot of different options of what you can choose. Uh, usually on Sunday mornings at Grace, we use King's Hawaiian bread. Uh, it's just kind of a tradition that we have, but it's not what you have to use. If you want the most historically accurate option, you use something like matzo bread. You can find this actually in the stores right now because Passover is coming up soon. And uh, you can purchase this, and it is probably the most similar option to what Jesus used with his disciples in the original Last Supper. It cracks really well uh, when you break it, which reminds us of Christ's body broken for us. Now, I mentioned King's Hawaiian bread. This is a, a mini version of one. Uh, if you want to purchase that as a way to remind you of your Grace family, you could use that. Or you could just use a regular staple bread. If you have white bread or wheat bread at home, I have a hamburger roll here or corn tortilla here. Any of those would remind us of the fact that we need Christ every day. And as Jesus taught us to pray, give us today our daily bread, much more than the bread we eat, we need to be reminded of his body given for us. Um, if you want something simple, maybe you have some crackers in your cabinet, I encourage you that those are those work great too, especially something like a Cars cracker or a savory thing or something like that. Well, that's the bread. Um, what about cup? Now, traditionally, the early church used red wine. Uh, that's probably what Jesus would have used with his disciples. The red of the wine represents his blood poured out for us. And until about 1850, that was really the only option, uh, because it wasn't until the 1850s that a Methodist minister figured out a way to arrest the alcohol, prop the, um, the process of the grapes becoming alcohol, and create a non-fermented yeah. grape juice. Um, so we use grape juice on Sunday mornings, that's non-fermented wine, essentially, out of respect for those who struggle with alcohol or for whom it's a stumbling block. So if you want to use grape juice, that's great. If you want to use red wine, that's great. If you want to buy a little thing of grape juice, or you have young kids at home, that's a, an efficient way to get a small amount. Um, if you don't have grape juice, you don't want to use grape juice, you don't want to use red wine, can you use something else? Sure. I would just encourage you to think about what represents the blood of Christ visually and remind your soul of the fact that Christ's blood was given for you. So probably not Coca-Cola, LaCroix. Uh, you want something that would remind you of the fact that Christ's blood has been poured out on your behalf. Well, I'm looking forward to taking communion with you. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me, or uh, if you want to send us a picture of your setup at your communion table at home, we'd love to see those on social media with the hashtag Grace at Home. And uh, looking forward to celebrating the table with you this week and the next number of weeks together. God bless.